To become cyborgs able to compete with the rapid evolution of computers, we first have to understand how our own brains function. The research in this area has boomed in recent years. One of the factors behind this is the development in scanning techniques. They are now at the level that enables us to observe individual nerve cells at work in living animals. In living so is this dying out here? Or I mean, no, is no. that a it's in the process of, of growing in. The technique is based on fluorescent jellyfish. Dr. Lichtman isolated the gene responsible for the fluorescence. He implanted it in mice and continued his experiments until he had a mouse of which only the brain cells were fluorescent. They're genetically engineered so that these are now heritable strains of mice. We have a yellow mouse strain, we have a blue mouse strain, we have a mouse strain where only a few cells are labeled, and we're now generating mice that have multiple colors in them. We call them brainbow mice. With this technique, we can see individual nerve cells make connections with each other and emit signals. It's really quite jaw-dropping. It's beautiful uh, when you look inside and see these uh, nerve cells that have always been there, uh, but never easy to see before in living animals. This technique is used now by many laboratories, helping in their efforts to understand how the brain functions. Other scientists use a completely different approach. They take the brain cells apart and let them grow in a small dish on top of a computer chip. The problem with this technique is that it is extremely difficult to place each cell exactly on the right connection point. A team of researchers at IMEC has recently found the trick. They printed a pattern on the chip with a product that the brain cells love to eat. While consuming the product, the cells get stuck to the right spot and their tentacles are guided by the pattern. This way, the whole network of brain cells can be entirely controlled. Some scientists have already been experimenting with such brain dishes. Their chips were less precise, but their results sometimes remarkable. Let me disconnect the light show. Dr. DeMars, for instance, tries to communicate with his brain dishes and teach them several tasks. So each of these dishes contains about 20,000 or so neurons, which are firing away as we speak. So each one's an individual network, and they'll fire spontaneously. We take living rat neurons, and they will rapidly form a neural network. And we have this grid of electrodes underneath the surface of these living neurons. And we can listen to the conversation among the neurons. And we can also stimulate activity within that network. We can send in different patterns of stimulation and look at how the network changes as a result of, of those stimulations. And that's how we do what we do. What he does is to teach his brain dishes how to control an airplane. The network can essentially fly the aircraft in a pretty optimal way. So it won't overcorrect too much, and it'll be able to stabilize it in a wide variety of conditions.